Hello all, I am Jessica and the topic for today's video is the benjas. So under this video we will be covering the meaning, the definition, the characteristics, advantages and disadvantages, types of debentures, charge and its kinds, issue of debentures, debenture trustee and the redemption of debentures. Meaning a debenture is basically a loan amount the company raised from the public. A person who has bought a debenture and holding it is called a debenture holder. A debenture holder is a creditor of the company. Debenture is a document issued under the seal of the company. It is an acknowledgement of the funds received by the company equal to the nominal value of the debenture. The issue of debenture is a means significant for raising capital from the market as contrasted with other modes like preference shares. The term debenture is derived from a Latin word debri which means to borrow. A debenture is a written tool accepting a debt under the general authentication of the enterprise. Now let us move on to the definition of a debenture under section 2 subsection 30 of the Companies Act 2013. It states, debenture includes debenture stock, bonds or any instruments of the company evidencing a debt whether constituting a charge on the assets of the company or not. This section provides that the company has a right to issue bonds or debenture which are instruments as a debt which can be both secured or unsecured by the way of creating charge on the assets of the company. Another definition given under the case of Levy versus Apcoris State and Slapco is that a debenture is a document which either creates a debt or acknowledges it and any document which fulfills either of these conditions is a debenture. Now let us see what are the characteristics of a debenture. Debenture is a movable property. It is in the form of a certificate of indebtedness of the company and issued by the company itself. The debenture holders are creditors to the company and they do not have any claim of ownership of the company unlike the shareholders. As the debenture holders are not the owner of the company, so they are not entitled with the administration and management of the company. The debenture have a fixed rate of interest on the principal amount which they get every year irrespective of the financial condition of the company. Debenchers usually have a charge on the asset of the company which means that if the company on liquidation is not able to repay the amount of debenture holders can sell the property of the company to recover the money. There is an undertaking given by the company to repay the debenture holders the principal amount along with the interest at the time. The debenture holders cannot claim the privilege to vote in any of the meetings. When the company is winding up, the first priority of the company is to repay the debenture holders of the company. Hence, there is no risk involved of loss of money of debenture holders. Now let us see a few advantages of debentures. A debenture plays a regular interest rate or coupon rate return to the investors. Convertible debentures can be converted to equity shares after a specific period, making them more appealing to the investors. In the event of corporation's bankruptcy, the debenture is paid before the common stock shareholders. Now the disadvantages of debentures. Fixed rate debentures may have interest rate exposure in the environment where the market rate is rising. Credit worthiness is important when considering the chance of default risk from underlying issuer's financial viability. The debenture may have inflationary risk if coupon paid does not keep up with the rate of inflation. Now let us see different types of debentures. Debentures are classified under five categories. The first one is from the point of view of security. Two, Secured and the unsecured debts. Secured debts. Secured debentures are that kind of debentures where a charge is being established on the properties or assets of the enterprise for the purpose of any payment. The charge might be either floating or fixed. We will be seeing that in the next topics. Second is unsecured debt debentures. 
they do not have a particular charge on the asset of the enterprise. However, a floating charge may be established on these debentures by default. Usually, these types of debentures are not circulated. The second classification is from the point of view of tenor to redeemable and irredeemable debentures. Redeemable debentures. These debentures are those debentures that are due on the cessation of the time frame either in lump sum or in installments during the lifetime of the enterprise. Debentures can be reclaimed either at premium or at par. Irredeemable debentures. These debentures are also called a perpetual debentures as the company doesn't give any attempt for the repayment of money acquired or borrowed by circulating such debentures. These debentures are repayable on the closing up of an enterprise or on the expiry or cessation of a long period. The third classification is on the convertibility of debentures into convertible debentures and non-convertible debentures. Debentures which are changeable to equity shares or in any other security either of the choice of the enterprise or the debenture is called a convertible debenture. Whereas the debentures which cannot be changed into shares or in other securities are called non-convertible debentures. Most debentures circulated by the enterprises fall under this category. The fourth classification is from the point of view of the coupon rate as specific coupon rate debentures and zero coupon rate debentures. Specific coupon rate debentures. Such debentures are circulated with the mentioned rate of interest the next one is zero coupon rate debentures. These debentures don't normally carry a particular rate of interest. In order to restore the investors, such type of debenture is circulated at a considerable discount and the difference between the nominal value and the circulated price is treated as the amount of interest associated to the duration of the debentures. The last classification is from the point of view of the registration as registered debentures and bearer debentures. Registered debentures. These debentures are such debentures within which all the details comprising addresses, names and particulars of the holding of the debenture holders are filled in a register kept by the enterprise. Such debentures can be moved only by performing a normal transfer deed. The second one is bearer debentures. These debentures are debentures which can be transferred by way of delivery and the company does not keep any record of the debenture holders. Interest on the debentures is paid to the person who produces the interest coupon attached to such debentures. Now let us move on to the charge. A charge is a security interest given to the creditor over the company's asset. If the company defaults on the loan, the creditor has the rights over the secured assets and can sell or realize the assets towards repayment. The term charge is not defined in the company's act. Section 4 merely states that a charge includes mortgage and any agreement to give a charge or a mortgage. The company can create more than one charge over the same asset. The order of priority of charges will determine the order of repayment to the creditors. Now let us see the kinds of charges. Charges are mainly divided into fixed charge and floating charge. Fixed charge. This is identified with a specific and clear asset at the time of the creation of the charge. The company is not supposed to transfer this kind of a charge unless the charge holder is paid off his due for the same. Floating charge. Floating or the circulating nature of the properties of a company like sundry debtors or stocking chain trade can be deemed as a floating charge. The nature of these kinds of charge keeps changing from time to time. The floating charge can convert into fixed charge if there is a crystallization of the company or undertaking ceases to be a going concern. In the case of Illingworth versus Hallsworth, a floating charge is ambulatory and shifts in nature. However, over and so to speak, floating with the property which is intended to affect until some event occurs or some act is done with costs which causes it to settle and fasten on the subject of the charge which in its reach and grasp. Now let us see the advantages of debenture over shares. 
shares dilute the ownership of the company whereas debenture does not dilute the ownership of the company while issuing shares the ownership of the company changes Debentures are temporary finance whereas shares have no redemption till the winding up of the company. Now let us see the procedure for the issue of debentures. 1. Meeting under section 179 subsection 3 of the Companies Act. It is essential to hold a meeting under section 179 subsection 3 of the Companies Act 2013 and a resolution is to be passed. Later, under Section 71 of the Act, the company can raise funds by issue of debentures. 2. Special Resolution It is essential to get a special resolution in the meeting. It is also required to fix the kind of debenture to be issued and also the kind of charge to be given. 3. Debenture Redemption Account for the purpose of issuing debentures, it is also mandatory for the company to open an account for the redemption of debentures. Thus, it is required to set aside some money collected by issue of debenture to this account for the purpose of the redemption of the debentures. Debenture Trustee Informally, debenture trustee is a person who is responsible for insurance and distribution of debentures. A debenture trustee is a person or entity that serves as the holder of debenture stock for the benefit of another party. When a company is looking to raise capital, one method of accomplishing this is by issuing stock as a form of debt with the obligation to repay the debt at a specific interest rate. The trustee serves as a license, that is, the person who keeps in contact with different groups. According to SEBI rules 1993, debenture trustee means a trustee of a trust deed for securing any issue of debentures of a body corporate. Eligibility for a debenture trustee To act as a debenture trustee, the entity should either be scheduled bank carrying on commercial activity, a public financial institution, an insurance company or a body corporate. The entity should be registered with SIBI to act to a debenture trustee. All appointments to be made of the debenture trustee shall be made under Section 71 of the Companies Act. Now, let us move on to the rights of a debenture trustee. Section 18 Clause C of the Companies Act state that a company in no case can issue debentures before appointment of a debenture trustee. The company cannot issue debentures before obtaining the consent of a debenture trustee. The company has, no spec has to specify the name of the debenture trustee in the offer letter. The debenture trustee can call for periodical performance report of the company. The trustee can call for the reports regarding the use of funds raised through the issue of debentures. The trustee can communicate promptly to the debenture holder's default, if any, with regard to the payment of interest of redemption of debenture and act taken by the trustee, therefore. A trustee can appoint a nominee to the board of directors of the company. Now, let us see a few liabilities of the debenture trustee. No one can be appointed as a debenture trustee if he has share ownership in the company. He cannot be appointed if he is a promoter of the company, employee or the manager. No appointment for creditor of the company. The vacancy of the debenture trustee can be filled by the company by the consent of other trustees. Now let us see a few duties of a debenture trustee. The trustee ensures that there is no breach in the terms of issue of debentures. The trustee can take steps to remedy the breach. The trustee is the person who informs the debenture holders about such breach. The trustee ensures that all the conditions regarding creation of security of debentures is met. The trustee conveys the meeting between the company and the debenture holders. Now, let us move on to the redemption of debentures. Redemption of debentures stand for repayment of the total amount of the debentures by the company in accordance with the terms and conditions of issue. Once a debenture is redeemed by the company, it is dis discharged or absolved of liability on the account of those debentures. 
there are four ways by which the debentures can be redeemed. The first one is payment in lump sum. At the end of a stipulated time, the company redeems debentures by the payment of lump sum amount as per the terms of issue. The second one is payment in installments. The payment of redemption of debenture in this case is made in installment on specific dates during the tenure of the debenture. The total liability of the company is divided into number of years. The third type is purchase in the open market. Redemption of debentures by purchase in the open market is when a company purchases its own debenture for the purpose of cancellation of such debentures. The fourth one is by conversion into shares or new debentures. In this type, the company redeems its debenture by converting them either into share or creating a new class of debentures. It is at the option of the debenture holder to exercise their rights of converting the debentures if he finds the offer beneficial. Debenture Redemption Reserve Account Under Section 71, Subsection 4 of the Companies Act 2013, at the time of issuing of debentures by the company, it is mandatory for the company to create a debenture redemption reserve account with the profits of the company which are available for dividend and the amount added to such account can be utilized for no other purpose other than the redemption of these debentures. There are certain conditions prescribed under Rule 18 of the Companies Act, Share Capital and Debenture Rules 2014. They are Creation of debenture redemption reserve shall be out of the profits of the company available for the payment of dividend. Second one, the company shall create debenture redemption reserve equal to at least 50% of the money gathered through the debenture issue before the debenture redemption starts. Three, the creation of debenture redemption reserve shall not be later than the 30th of April in each year. Deposit or invest an amount which is not below 15% of the amount of debentures maturing during the till date till 31st March of the next year. 4. In case of partially convertible debentures, the de debenture redemption reserve shall be created in respect of non-convertible portion of the debenture issued in accordance with the subrule. 5. The amount added to such account can be utilized for no other purpose other than the redemption of debentures. Hope this video was interesting and informative. Thank you.